Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Marilyn Townsend, and I would like to introduce Wayne Strong, running for the Madison Metropolitan School Board Seat 7. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Marilyn, and thanks to the uh, League of Women Voters for the opportunity to speak to you about my candidacy today. So, thanks. Mm -hmm. As we begin, I'd like you to give an opening statement outlining the educational, vocational, and civic experience that qualifies you for this office and tell us why you're running for the Madison Metropolitan School Board. Um, well, I, I've been involved in various activities uh, uh, in the Madison Metropolitan School District for many years since my kids were uh, in elementary school at Hawthorne Elementary back in the mid-90s. Uh, I got involved in um, their educational process because I felt that it was important for me as a parent uh, to be uh, intimately involved in their education. And so uh, I've been in, uh, on numerous committees uh, uh, within the, the district when my kids were at Hawthorne. I was on the um, SIP committee. Uh, we've I've been involved in different, uh, you know, parental activities, uh, uh, the PTO, um, and uh, education is important. Um, I served for many years uh, as a Madison police officer, working um, uh, in the in the city. Uh, part of that role involved a lot of community work, um, and so I've been involved extensively in the community with various volunteer efforts. I've been a volunteer for the Southside Raiders Youth Football and Cheerleading Program now for 24 years. I've seen a lot of kids come through that program and now their kids are coming through the program. So it's, you know, it's generational. Um, and I've always felt that education is really uh, the key to success. It's, 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 it's the equal opportunity. Um, um, for kids to be able to uh, improve their lives and and uh, do well in society. And working as a police officer, I saw the 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 you know the downside of kids who are not succeeding in our schools. And I've watched this over the course of many years now, where so many of our kids are not making it, and they're ending up in our juvenile and ultimately our criminal justice system. And so I really feel like there's measures in place that there's policy that we can implement and and, and uh, that will help to reduce. Um, reduce those kids from ending up in the system. What are the first two issues you will encourage the new superintendent to tackle and why? What skills will you bring to the table to assist him? I think it's important that we, um, that we continue, given uh, the, the disparities that we've had in our educational system over the course of many years now, I think it's important now that the district has implemented the Black Excellence Program that we continue that. And I hope that the superintendent will really be gung-ho about making sure that you know, we're, we're funding uh, Black Excellence and, and making it a success. Uh, because I think when our students uh, are, when our, when our lowest performing students are achieving, that that's a, that's a, that's a win for the district. So upping their educational opportunities and increasing their educational outcomes will be huge. Um, so I think that being, um, you know, having extensive community ties and, and, and having the ability to, to, to talk with different groups of people, I think that that will be an asset. And I also think the other thing that we really have to focus on, and I hope that the superintendent will be um, uh, amenable to really increasing our efforts to uh, expand our pool of educators in terms of uh, teachers of color. I think that uh, you know all of the studies show that particularly black children, but really all children do well when they have at least one black teacher in elementary school, that these kids are more likely to stay in school and not drop out, as well as uh, graduate and then show interest in college. So I think expanding the pool of teachers of color is really gonna be benef beneficial for the district, and I would certainly be a huge advocate of, of us doing that. Despite a small amount of improvement, black students and students with disabilities yeah. remained overrepresented among those suspended during the first semester of the 2019-2020 school year. Yeah. Why do you think improvement in this area is so slow? And what would you advocate as a board member when it comes to suspending students? Yeah, that's been an issue that I've been uh, following, tracking for a very long time. Um, 
and my first candidacy in 2013, that was one of my main points, is that we really have to look at reducing those suspensions because that is what leads to kids when they're not in school, they're out in the community getting into tr trouble and having other issues. So I think that in order for us to really get a handle on that, we have to address the what I call the principal service needs of these students, right? They're coming into school with all sorts of issues, trauma, food insecurity, poverty, uh, homelessness, and they're bringing that into school. And our schools are really not equipped to deal with it on that level. And so I think we need to, these kids, with special needs kids, are, are our students of color that are, are students of color that are getting suspended at these at these really high rates. I think what we, we need to really get to the, the, the get to the root cause of what's of what's creating the behavior that they're displaying when they're in school. And I, I hear from teachers all the time that I talk to about it's like, you know, we really have to address these issues because the teachers are not equipped to deal with it. We have social workers and psychiatrists or psychologists, but I think we need to expand our pool of, of SEAs, teachers that are, are SEAs and uh, really professionalize that position so that they can be more involved in the classroom because a lot of these kids that are having these challenges are kids that just really need that extra attention. They just really need someone who can just be with them and help calm them throughout the day. And um, if those SEAs are, are, are equipped to help them with their literacy and numeracy skills, that's even better. Uh, we just don't want you know, kids uh, uh, sitting someplace and because they're not acting out, they're just sitting there and they're not engaged. It's important that we continue to engage students and make sure that we're providing with the best op educational opportunities that we can afford them. Wisconsin has the widest achievement gap between black and white students yeah. of any state in the United States, yeah. according to the assessment known as the nation's report card. Yeah. The state superintendent has said the achievement gap is a crisis and closing it is imperative for yeah. our state. Yeah. What could Madison schools be doing better when it comes to closing racial achievement gaps and what, if anything, are they doing wrong? I don't know. I'll start with the latter part of the question first. I don't think we're doing anything wrong. I, I think that, you know, we have policies in place. I, I think that really what we need to get at, and, and those that, that those numbers are, are quite disturbing. And you know, many years ago, uh, the district identified the achievement gap. I guess we call it now the opportunity gap as the number one problem facing the district. And we put together a strategic framework, and there's a lot of good stuff in that strategic framework, but I think what we, what we haven't really dealt with is uh, two things. One, we really have to get a handle, as I said before, on, on the issues uh, that these kids are bringing into the school that's, that's creating the disturbances in school that's leading to them being out of the classroom and ultimately out of the school. Uh, so I think we need to start there. And I also think that, uh, again, increasing the number of teachers of color is going to be beneficial in terms of, of making sure that we're engaging all of our students so that they know that there's somebody in the school that cares about them. And it's really important that we look at uh, those, those strategies that will help us to pinpoint how it is we can keep our kids in school, and that because that leads to, again, a whole host of other challenges that um, ultimately uh, increase the, the, the achievement gap. And so focusing on, on student behavior, uh, making sure that we're, we're getting all the students' needs met so that when they're in school they can focus on learning, the teacher can focus on teaching, and it's, it's, a, it's a safe and, and, and productive environment. And I think that will be, go a long way with helping us uh, to solve that issue. How can the district do a better job of recruiting and retaining teachers of color? Boy, that's a good question, man. I think, um, you know, uh, I think we, we, we have the Grow Your Own program, which I think is good. Um, and I think we need to continue to expand upon that program, right? I mean, there, there are a lot of, of really good people that I know, have known for years, that uh, have, have, you know, wanted to teach in the Madison School District. and. For some of them, they just have not been able to get hired until recently. There seems to be a, a shift in that now. So I think growing your own, encouraging young people at an early age to, uh, to consider uh, teaching as a profession, and it is really making it more um, attractive for them in terms of, 
of, of how they can really help to uh, improve the lives of other, of other people I think is critical and I think just encouraging them to get into the field uh, and making it uh, attractive by you know good salary, benefits, uh, all those things I think will help to really attract uh, students of color and I think what well, or teachers of color and I think we need to go outside of Wisconsin even and look at some of the other states that uh, you know uh, people that might be willing to come here and and uh, teach. Right. Given the timing of the referenda you will have to start the school year with an uncertain budget in constructing that budget which may require five to eight million dollars in cuts yeah. What would you cut and what will you protect? I will, I will certainly protect um, uh, anything that has to do with our classrooms. Uh, I don't want to touch any of our teacher salaries or benefits. I think it's important that our, our, our classrooms remain intact. I think that would probably look at areas such as administrative costs. I think there's some maybe some administrative uh, uh, salaries that we could maybe look at. So I would probably start there and just really avoid anything that ha would have to do with anything uh, that's is, is student facing in terms of, of teachers or, or uh, services that we're providing for our students. If you are elected, what will you do to engage and connect with the variety of community members you represent? I will make sure that I am open to dialogue. I will uh, reach out to people. I know that you know uh, there's there's all sorts of, of of different issues out there, different groups that have different uh, uh, agenda, and I just want to make sure that that the lines of communication is open. So I would certainly have uh, a policy where I would uh, actually, uh, if need be, go out and hold community meetings and talk to people in the community. I think it's important that engagement piece is really critical because oftentimes what I hear is that there seems to be a lack of transparency or there's a lack of communication and I really think it's important that as a board and for me as a board member to really communicate uh, what the board is doing, how we're doing it, and to always make sure that we've got the input from the community because that way they feel engaged, they feel like they're being listened to, they're being heard. And I think that goes a long way with building trust and making sure that the students, uh, our, the needs of our students is always kept at the center of, of whatever issue we're tackling, that their needs are, 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 are the primary focal point. But engaging people and making sure that the lines of communication are always open is something that I'm, I'm very passionate about. What would you like to say, Mr. Strong, to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Well, I, you know, for many people who, who may not know, this is my third time running for the Madison School Board. Um, I have a passion for education, a passion for social justice, and I feel that um, with the community involvement that I've been engaged in over the course of the past many years, with the various boards I've served on, committees, my involvement and volunteer work in the community, that I'm really ready to hit the ground running in terms of making sure that all of our students uh, are achieving, our highest uh, achieving students, I want to make sure that they maintain or increase their, their level of achievement, but I also want to make sure that the lowest level achieving students uh, are also getting the attention that they need so that they can achieve as well. And I think that's going to create a, a better balanced district. It's going to make it a more attractive district for people. Um, and I, I think that uh, making sure that our students are safe in the schools is important, that we have really good uh, anti-bullying, anti-harassment policies and practices that help students feel safe. And just uh, making sure that we are doing all that we can to improve uh, the, the overall educational quality of our district so that um, we are moving forward. I want to thank Wayne Strong for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking time to know your candidates. Please vote in the April 7th election and in every election. And I want to thank Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters for providing this forum today. Thank you for joining us. Yeah.